Today we are speaking with Panu Wilska. Panu is the CEO of Cleamix. Cleamix is a manufacturer of portable vaporizers for hydrogen peroxide. Welcome, Panu. Uh, please tell us a little bit about the products and the services that Cleamix provides. Hey, thank you much. Thank you very much, Janice. So, as I said, um, Cleamix uh, manufactures um, hydrogen peroxide vaporizers and uh, they are used for decontamination, decontamination of uh, uh, spaces like uh, hospital rooms. Uh, uh, you can use it uh, with ambulances, uh, vehicles, uh, or uh, treating or decontaminating individual objects. So uh, we have the smallest and uh, still most uh, uh, efficient uh, product in the market. And uh, this is actually the only hydrogen peroxide vaporizer that has full control of uh, ambient uh, conditions thanks to the Weisala HP270 series sensor suite, which enables us to uh, always make sure that the user has no risk of generating uh, excess condensation on the surfaces. Uh, Right now, um, we have been ramping up uh, our operation. This is a fairly new company. Um, you can say that we are sort of startup still. However, we are already present uh, in all continents. Uh, well, not in Antarctica, but everywhere else. And um, and uh, we have a, we are in the process of signing up global distributors, and uh, we are adding a new country. Uh, to that list, uh, I would say at least once a week, one per week, uh, uh, even two per week. Uh, actually, even on our website, the list of partners is uh, is lagging behind. I guess we need to update that one. But uh, really, this is a combination of um, two great innovations. One is our totally new groundbreaking method of uh, vaporizing hydrogen peroxide, and also the state of the art Vaisala uh, hydrogen peroxide sensor. Uh, which uh, in, which gives us all the telemetry uh, that we need and which was uh, in the past not even possible to have all that data in one single feed. Yeah, you use the HPP272 to measure temperature, relative humidity and relative saturation. And can you tell me a little bit about what was important about getting that relative saturation value? Well, relative saturation is especially important with uh, hydrogen peroxide because uh, relative humidity only tells you about how far you are from condensation point with water vapor. Now, hydrogen peroxide condensates, uh, I would say, 20 times easier than water. So uh, if you want to make sure that you understand where is the condensation point when you use hydrogen peroxide vapor, uh, for decontamination, you have to understand both the water uh, saturation and uh, the uh, hydrogen peroxide saturation. So, for example, if you have a relative humidity of, uh, let's say, 60%, you can have a relative saturation during hydrogen peroxide decontamination cycle approaching 100. So, uh, as we know, hydrogen peroxide condensation can damage surfaces. Uh, the vapor, the gas, doesn't damage anything. It kills microbes but doesn't harm any surfaces. But if you let it condensate, you have a potentially serious problem for electronics or, or sensitive materials. So that is especially important. So with the Weissler probe, uh, we can see both values. We see the relative humidity, we see the relative saturation, which is a combination of hydrogen peroxide and water. And that is giving the automatic feedback of our, um, our device that even if user has entered uh, program parameters that could lead to, uh, lead to condensation, the machine is not allowing to do that. So automatic safeguards are triggering. And uh, this is the only machine in the market where real-time sensor data is adjusting uh, the, the parameters of the process in real time. So the sensors, uh, the HPP272, are integrated with the Cleamix vapor generator. Well, you can't really say integrated. It's a, it's a connected. So the, 
the sensor itself is typically placed as far away from the actual device as possible because uh, our machine has extremely high output rate. And if the, if the sensor is too close to the machine, then even with uh, proper air circulation, uh, you may get too high uh, concentration values. So typically uh, the sensor, the cable, standard length of the cable, I think is one and a half meters. Mm. And, and some customers ask even longer cables. So the sensor itself is taken uh, as far from the machine as the, as the cable allows. But it's integrated in the sense that it's integrated part of the process control. Okay, so recently I know that you visited the Centers for Disease Control in Korea to do decontamination work in their biosafety labs. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, that was um, extremely uh, useful, useful experience, uh, uh, both for the company and, and for me personally. So, uh, so they have a BSL-2 and BSL-3 level laboratories. And... Uh, of course, these kind of laboratories have to be decontaminated frequently. They, uh, they handle their uh, extremely dangerous pathogens, uh, SARS, MERS, uh, Corona. And uh, even if you don't have any outbreak, you still have to do frequent decontamination to ensure that the work environment is safe. And also that you don't uh, contaminate your pending analyses with something which is residual leftover from something else. So, so in this case, uh, uh, these laboratories, they had several uh, interconnected uh, uh, rooms. So rooms were connected by a joint corridor, uh, airlocks to get in and out and storage areas. So we had, a, in this case, we had a four network machines. So our device is network. So you can use one uh, control system to, uh, to control a process of several machines, which are network together. And uh, we did uh, this laboratory in five different uh, runs. So we segmented it out based by the volume. And, and first uh, we did uh, the other laboratory in three different uh, runs. So we divided into three equal volumes and we placed uh, typically one machine per room. And uh, the results were so good. I mean, uh, the treatment time needed for six log kill, which means 99.9999% uh, bacteria micros dead. Uh, we reached that in one hour and 15 minutes. Uh, it was later confirmed by biological indicators. So the next day when we did the other part of the laboratory, we could divide that to two segments and we still got about the same running time, about one hour, 15 minutes per segment. And, uh, and that showed that in laboratory conditions, we could even increase uh, the, the volume that one machine is able to treat in very short time. Now, this was extremely uh, interesting uh, from the angle that they had previously used another vendor's uh, machinery and uh, they, that machinery is based on intentionally causing surface condensation. Okay, in laboratory environment, you can do that, but, um, but you, you, you cannot uh, really do that uh, in, a, in a place where you have, a, you have a sensitive materials. So anyway, they needed uh, four full days. So four times 24 hours to, uh, to, get, uh, to get that, uh, that work done. And, um, and uh, in our case, we did it in two business days. Mm. So we were not allowed to do any preparations or anything outside of normal business hours. So in total of 16 hours, including the setup and dismantling, we did everything. And uh, the previous vendor, uh, <coughs> they, they, they needed 96 hours for the whole thing. So... So was there anything different about this situation? Because I believe it was recent. And, and so first, what brought you to Korea to do the work? And, and was there anything different about this bio decontamination work from other situations? Okay, so uh, if, I, if I say uh, that, uh, that uh, the, the big main difference uh, was that uh, for me, it was first time going into hot 
target. I mean, I've been doing field work a lot, but mostly they've been demos. So for me, this was the first time where where you really have to put on breathe, uh, you know, like uh, respirators and um, and uh, full coveralls and make sure that uh, that you are really really protected against anything that can reside in a BSL three laboratory. So that was that was kind of a personal experience. I've been I've been working in nuclear power plants, so this was a little bit comparable to going to some uh, high contamination area. Now, uh, how did we end up? How do, how did we? Uh, why why we were there? Uh, we have an excellent partner in South Korea. Uh, the company is CHC Labs, and they have a, a subsidiary called BioAll. So they are our distributor in uh, in South Korea, and. Um, they also have a managed services offering. So, so the group that I was with there is their managed services team. And, uh, and as we were training their core staff at the same time, I went, uh, went with them and uh, we visited actually many government sites. And on this one, uh, we did the actual uh, cleaning work. So this was not a demo, this was a commercial commercial project mm. and of course KCDC was very interested that uh, to understand that okay if they need rapid decontamination of such facility how quickly we can do it how much time they need to prepare and they were positively surprised that okay what used to be 96 hours is actually now it was 16 hours and we determined that if we are given chance for doing preparations i mean i've never been in that place before mm -hmm. so now that i know uh, what it looks like inside we could easily do it in one day so it's all about preparations planning and having reference on how did your machines perform in that area so uh, so i guess now that uh, they have the covid uh, outbreak well korea doesn't really have an outbreak anymore they are example for the rest of the world how to deal this kind of situation so i think we we should really study carefully how they how they what they did and how but anyway uh now they know how to get the laboratories uh, decontaminated in a in a very short time yeah it seems like speed of the response was one of south korea's strengths in dealing with the outbreak and uh do you think that's part of the reason why they contacted you and your distributor instead of I, their previous vendor? Yeah, I think uh, I think they were aware of uh, of that uh, they should always follow what is the best practices available in the market, mm. and and uh, that's why they they uh, asked us to to come in there. But uh, if we look at Korea's response to COVID, not only. Uh, they were very effective in testing and preparation. They were also ef extremely efficient in tracing all the infection chains. So they they located all uh, people who were uh, possibly exposed to, uh, to corona uh, con uh, corona infection, and they could isolate those people effectively. And uh, therefore, uh, the general population was pretty safe all the time. So let me tell you an example. Uh, weeks after I returned from Korea, I'm still getting um, messages to my my Kakao Map application, telling, in, informing me that if you use this bus in this region, please go to test immediately because Corona infected person was in that bus on that time, or uh, or wow. uh, yes, it, it goes to that level, or if you have been in a in a restaurant where 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 somebody has uh, been positive for Corona. You get SMS, you get uh, app, uh, app, even the map applications are sending you messages that, okay, if you were there, go to test immediately. That's incredible. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a really, really, the rest of the world should study carefully what they did and how. That's wonderful. So going forward now, do you foresee that um, biodecontamination is going to become more important I'm, it's always been important in biosafety labs, obviously, but do you see it becoming uh, broader use in applications? Yes, definitely, because this is actually uh, one of the things that we discussed uh, in today's webinar that we just, uh, before coming to this interview, we just concluded a, a webinar where we discussed about the topic of uh, corona uh, spreading airborne. So it turned out that uh, that corona uh, 
can spread as an aerosol. And, uh, and as, a, as an aerosol, uh, it can travel very long distances. So, uh, so you, <laughs> you, you, you can't rely on, the, on this two meter, two meter uh, uh, distance. You actually, you actually have to be prepared that if you go to grocery store, you may be exposed to, uh, to, uh, to corona. You can, you, can, uh, you can get infected even if you keep a two meter or five meter distance to the other people. So, so that, is, uh, that is something that uh, the governments are only slowly admitting that, uh, that this is the case. So, um, so this airborne aspect is something that requires that you really need to have a frequent decontamination of every room, every like a public transport uh, vehicle, a bus, a rail car, whatever. Because if the virus is airborne, it also sticks to the surfaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, on Diamond Princess Cruise Liner, traces of corona were found 17 days after last passenger had disembarked. So it means that it survives on surfaces. And as it, as it can spread uh, airborne, it means that you can, it can be anywhere. So the only way to make sure that some place is safe and clean is that you have a decontamination method using, using gas. And hydrogen peroxide vapor is the only method that leaves no residuals, is safe for the surfaces, and, uh, and uh, it's uh, relatively easy to set up and control, at least uh, if, when using Cleamix machinery. So we can, we can network multiple devices and treat pretty much unlimited sizes of volumes. Well, thank you for speaking with me today. I really appreciate your time. I know it's the end of your day there. So um, yeah, thanks again for sharing the information. I think this is really critically important to everyone at this time. And good luck with Cleamix. Yeah, and, uh, and also I think, uh, you have been doing excellent work with um, with this sensor with Vaisala, because uh, now uh, the use case of uh, decontaminating uh, used respirators and uh, and uh, coveralls, like normally things which are normally disposed of, uh, in some cases they just have to be reused. And uh, thanks uh, to to your sensor and ability to control the the saturation point, you can uh, treat massive amounts of recyclable gear and you don't have to worry about getting them wet from condensation resulting from the treatment. So uh, that, that's the missing link from those uh, studies uh, uh, published by uh, CDC and Duke University. Uh, yes, it's effective, but if you don't know how to control the saturation point and control the process accordingly, you may get uh, condensation to the material that may cause damages and we will help uh, to make, make sure that that doesn't happen. But thank you very much, uh, Janice. And I, I wish you, I don't know, I don't remember well if, if you really have an Easter holiday in US, but uh, nevertheless. Yes, yes, we do. Okay, thanks a lot, Panu. Stay well. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.